that the 501c3s, when you think of, you know, the, whether it's the NACP, the ACLU, the en en Environmental uh, Defense Council, all of them uh, are really a shadow political universe. Because whenever there's a debate, I realized this when uh, I was uh, joined with my uh, center's attorney, Manny Klausner, on panels debating Prop 209 in this state uh, back in uh, 2000. Uh, it was an initiative, and it was to end race preferences. Now, that's your basic political debate, um, and it affects, it affects the, uh, the actual election. Uh, there was a big battle, for example, Republicans didn't want Ward Connolly's initiative on the ballot because that would bring out the left to attack it and so forth. So it, it is politics. Uh, and on the other side were uh, representatives of the ACLU, a 501c3, and uh, the NACP, a 501c3. And I, I, it was then that I realized that this whole shadow political universe carries on the political debate between elections. Conservatives hate politics. I mean, that, that's your basic, if you're a conservative, this is a very ugly, sleazy uh, interference with, you know, creativity, uh, actually creating jobs, as opposed to leeching off the job creators uh, <laughs> and uh, lining the pockets of your favorite causes. Um, this is, but this is where this is where politics politics takes takes place. Uh, there are 553. I have to remember all these figures. 553 anti-free market environmental organizations. These are organizations that blame corporations and capitalism. That that's they cause global warming. We forget whether global warming is something that we need to be concerned about at the moment. Uh, there is also a huge controversy as to whether it's man-made. But no, these organizations, it's man-made and corporations did it. And the solution is massive government control of your life. And these are the people who sponsor cap and trade, who thought it up in the first place, these 501c3s. Thought up cap and trade. And I think, what is cap and trade? Well, it means what these people want to do is they want the government to tell you uh, how often you can turn on your light switch in your home. They're going to regulate and tax absolutely everything that has to do with energy, which is absolutely everything. How far you can travel in your car. It's the greatest threat to individual freedom uh, that we're facing. Leading these charges are organizations like the Environmental Defense Council. And it, a creature of the Ford Foundation, it's now worth $139 million itself, but it's Ford that launched it and created it. There are 553 anti-free market left-wing environmental organizations, all tax exempt. They have $9.5 billion in assets. How, how big is that? Well, the Environmental Protection Agency of the federal government, its annual budget is less than that. On the other side of this debate, <laughs> as opposed to the 553, are 32 free market environmental organizations. And their assets are 38 million. You got that? 9.5 billion versus 38 million. Mike Bauer did the arithmetic for me. That's 249 times. Are you wondering why we lo <laughs> we're, we're losing this argument? Why? And just think of the environmental argument. Now, Obama has said, we told the New Yorker, that the centerpiece of his second administration is going to be climate change. Uh, now, it, wasn't it just, what is it, two, three years ago that the leading climate, sci climate scientists in the world were exposed uh, for cooking the books and deliberately falsifying the evidence on climate change 
because it was going against them. We have been in a cooling for 10 years. So you might think this is a little problematic to make, uh, assume it as fact and make it the centerpiece of your uh, administration. But that, that's what he's doing and that's the power. Not only do they have the 9.5 billion in assets, these left-wing foundations, but of course when Democratic legislators put through legislation and many Republicans are snookered to going along with it, who do you think they fund? They provide money for, quote, environmental organizations, which turns out to be anti-free market, anti-capitalist, control your life, left-wing environmental organizations. How much? It's $570 million annually. It's a $570 million annual budget for these left-wing organizations. And how much do they give to the conservative ones? 700,000. <laughs> I leave you to do that arithmetic. It's the same thing uh, with immigration organizations. How have we gotten to a point? I was just watching uh, Gonzalez and, and Marco Rubio, uh, who, who I, I think is, you know, would be a great uh, vice presidential candidate. I'm, he is a, a, a spectacular um, figure in the conservative firmament. But both of them referred, of course they were uh, upset by uh, Obama's unilateral uh, amnesty, but they refer to undocumented immigrants. What the heck is that? Did these people lose their documents? Oh, they never applied for them. These are illegal aliens. But it's politically a third rail, uh, at least that's the way they feel, to use illegal alien, the only accurate description of people who have come across the border uh, and, and stayed here without going through the process of citizenship. That's how powerful this new Leviathan, this left-wing juggernaut funded by the 115 foundations with $100 billion behind them and 553, well that's on the environment, there's 117 open borders, anti-citizenship, uh, left-wing immigration foundations. Now, I, I would give you just a little story so you see how this happened. The Mexican-American Legal Defense Fund is the leading so-called Mexican organization, as though it's a grassroots organization, which it is not, uh, represent, uh, which represents the radical fringe, or what used to be a radical fringe, uh, on, the on the immigration, the borders. There's, not, there's really no few more important issues than borders. That's how you define a country. Uh, that's how, you know, we have a civilization and a culture which is unique to our shores and was evolved over 250 years and more. Uh, that's why we're free people. That's why we're a creative people. Uh, Mexico has tremendous natural resources which they've controlled, uh, you know, for almost a century, uh, yet it's a basket case and that's because of its culture. Its political culture is so corrupt uh, that you can't develop uh, a wealth-producing engine there. And that's why so many Mexicans uh, want to come here. So the definition of citizenship is really what this country is about. And if you uh, obliterate the distinction between citizens and non-citizens and you have no assimilation process, and in fact you regard assimilation uh, as a, a racist idea, uh, that's the end. That's the end of, of, of this country in the long run. Well, what happened? But Moldov in 1970 was a little civil rights organization in El Paso, Texas. And its mandate, I mean, it's said in its documents to uh, its constituencies, which were legal immigrants, you need to assimilate, you need to become Americans now. Their, their, their political mission was to secure, or legal mission, to secure 
equal treatment and equal rights for legal immigrants, for Mexicans who had come here, gone through the process, and become citizens. The Ford Foundation took Maldef, poured over the next 10, 20 years, $25 million into this little organization, moved it to San Francisco and Washington, and now it's in other states, uh, other cities, and changed its entire agenda so that now it's for voting rights for illegals, it's not only for welfare for illegals, edu uh, free education for illegals, uh, you know, don't deport uh, illegal criminals, uh, it's for the obliteration of the very idea of American citizenship. And it's moved the entire national debate in the process. And I'm, I'm simplifying because there's also La Raza. This organization calls itself The Race, which will tell you that it was started by flaming radicals who hated the basic American idea. They hate the American idea. They, they want to portray America as an oppressive, racist, uh, uh, conquering country. La Raza was another little organization that Ford just poured all this money into. And of course, once the venerable name of Ford is on, uh, you, you know, it's on your docket, other foundations came in and corporate, there's a lot of corporations that are funding these racist organizations, Moldef, La Raza, I mean, I could go down a whole list of them. Of course, the Puerto Rican Legal Defense Fund is another one completely created by Ford, uh, from which we now have a Supreme Court justice who thinks um, that judges uh, think according to their uh, ethnicity. Um, and of course, Ford is behind the whole multicultural movement in our universities. Now, the curriculum in our universities, as Jacob Lacks and I have also written a book called One Party Classroom, but I've written five books on this. The curriculum in our classrooms across the country is that America is a racist, sexist, imperialist, um, classist, it's, just, it's classical Marxism with race and gender of, and ethnicity thrown in. And it's basically an attack on the very idea of an American civilization, an American culture, uh, uh, an American uh, identity. Uh, and, uh, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, Arthur Schlesinger, a very famous liberal, um, but of a, an older generation, wrote a book called Disuniting America, said this, this movement, this multiculturalism, uh, is a threat. Uh, to, to the very fabric of our society. It would, there would be no multicultural curriculum in the universities if not for the Ford Foundation. And Barack Obama would not be president of the United States without the new Leviathan behind him. Barack Obama came out of Columbia and the first uh, job he had, uh, his first community organizing job, which is just another name for being a radical, um, was with the Gamaliel Foundation. Sounds religious, actually, it, uh, Gamaliel. It, 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 it's, it's religious in the way that Jim Wallace is religious, uh, or Jesse Jackson, or uh, Jeremiah Wright. It's a radical organization uh, whose goal was to get lots of government money into, uh, into poverty areas. Um, I'm going to come back to getting money into poverty areas, if I, if I remember, in a bit. Uh, but that's where he started. And he was picked up, well, because he, he, he already, as a, in college, already in high school, he was a radical. So uh, he was also picked up by the Midwest Academy. And these are funded by MacArthur and Ford and uh, Rockefeller and, so, and Joyce and so forth. Um, the Midwest Academy is run by two 60s radicals, or by Heather Booth in particular. Uh, her husband, Paul Booth, is an executive with the uh, Municipal Employees Union. So you have, this is where the alliance between the government unions and government union thugs, uh, and, and they're very radical. Um, the AFL-CIO with 
taken over by socialists in 1999, John Sweeney. When I say socialists,